on earth. He created Jacob, made Jacob his servant, made a covenant with Jacob, and Israel is chosen. Now let's go to Jeremiah 7, verse 17. It says, Seest thou what they do in the cities of Judah, in the cities of the Jews, and in the streets of Jerusalem? He's dealing with Israel. This whole Bible deals with the children of Israel. The children gather wood. These children are the children of Israel. They gather wood. And the fathers, these are the leaders, kindle the fire. And the women need their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. That's what the Spirit of God is telling Jeremiah as he looks upon Israel and upon Jerusalem to speak to the children of Israel. Now you gotta remember, we just read in Isaiah 44 that the Lord had made us, formed us in the womb, called us to be servants and chose us to be his people. Poured out his water, his knowledge upon us, gave us a covenant, gave us an understanding but we fast forward into the seventh chapter and we see that Israel has a problem the cities of Judah there's a big problem in Jerusalem in the streets for the children gather yeah, wood we're going to take a look at that real quick get my notes here in my hand right? The children gather wood. So first of all, what are the children? He's not simply talking about little children or biological children. That's a foundational understanding, but there's a spiritual understanding of this word children. The word children means followers and disciples. Okay. The proof of that, it also means sheep and lambs. So the proof of that we find in We'll find, uh, hold on, let me go to Genesis 3. Real quick, before I go to the New Testament. Genesis 3, 16. It says unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrows and in thy conception and the sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. So this woman, which represents spirit, shall bring forth disciples, sheep, lambs not simply natural children biological this is dealing with biological but also spiritual and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee so the woman shall bring forth children all right now let's take a look at genesis 22 actually let's go to matthew 18 3 speaking of children give you a few more precepts on children showing that it means disciples Matthew 18, 3. It says, At the same time came the disciples unto Yahweh, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Yahweh, who was Jesus, called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, all right, become a follower, become an obedient servant, and become as a little child, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall receive such a one, such a such one little child in my way receiveth me. So the disciples have to become as children. Children represent followers. Let's go to Matthew 19, verse 14. And Yahweh I says, Suffer the little children, the followers, to come and forbid them not to come unto me for such is the kingdom of heaven. And remember, he told Peter, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Let me pull that just a second. That's John 21, 16. Let's look there real quick. It 
They're dining, they're learning with Christ. Jesus said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs, meaning his children, his disciples, his followers. And he saith unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, Feed my sheep. And he tells him again in verse 17, I'm not going to read it all just to the end. It says, Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. So those are the disciples. Those are the lambs. Those are the children. Now, the children of Israel are the children. Actually, let's go to, there's another one. Go back to the law and the prophets. Those are the prophets. Isaiah 1, 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Spirit of God hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. These children are the children of, of Israel. They ought to be disciples and followers of Christ. Okay? Now, the children, the followers, gather wood. The wood deals with the flesh. They are living and operating in the flesh. It also deals with mankind, also deals with sinful flesh and the flesh. One example is Romans 8. God sent his son, his servant in the likeness of sinful flesh. That servant is the word that came out of heaven, out of the royal throne, which is Christ. So Romans 8, 3. But what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. So the flesh is weak. It's carnal. God sending his own servant in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemns sin in the flesh. That's that wood. An example of that is Genesis 22. The wood is needed for the burnt offering because it has to be consumed. Genesis 22 verse 3 and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood here we see the wood and for the burnt offering so the wood is for the burnt offering and it rose up and went into the place which God had told him then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off let's go to verse number Six, because he's going to take I, um, Isaac and go to worship. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they both went, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood. So there has to be a fire for this burnt offering, there has to be wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Okay. And then verse 9, And they came to the place which God had told them, and Abram built an altar there and laid the wood in order. So the wood has to be put in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar of wood. That place of sacrifice is wood. All right? So the children gather wood and, their, and the fathers kindle the fire. The fathers are the teachers, the leaders, the elders. Numbers 1 and 2. Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel after their families by the house of their fathers. With the number of their names, their ways, everyone mailed by their poles. Verse 4, let me just go to 3. And from 20 years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies. And with you there shall be a man of every tribe. So there's a man from every tribe, leaders from every tribe. These are those fathers. And every one head of the house of his fathers. 
And it goes down the names of the tribe of Reuben and the fathers and the head of the house. I'm not going to go through all that, but just to let you know. Okay. Now, you look at this in a foundational way, but let's look at it also spiritually. It says, so the children, the disciples gather the wood. They're moving after the flesh. The fathers, those teachers, those leaders kindle a fire, the desire. Now, their desire is not after Christ here. Their desire is after that strange woman, after the queen of heaven and after the flesh. Right? And the women, including the women, need their dough. So we're going to understand this women and the needing of dough and why they have to make cakes. So to do that, let's go to Genesis 18 and see the foundation of Mother Sarah making cakes and kneading dough for the Lord. It says, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plain of memory, and he sat in the tent's door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. All right? So he, he fetched them a little water. He says, a little water, I pray you be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. So you're going to rest under these elders. He says, and I fetched a morsel of bread and comforted and I will fetch a morsel of bread, meat, bread, doctrine, spiritually, and comfort ye your hearts after that ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. Verse 6 And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal. Knead it. So you got to get that fine meal, that fine flour without leaven and knead it and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abram ran into the herd and fetched the tender calf. Uh, I'll stop there. So she's making cakes upon the hearth. Okay. Now let's look at Exodus 12. When we were coming, our forefathers were coming out of Egypt. Remember, she's making cakes for the Lord. Exodus 12:34. Thirty-three, And the Egyptians were urging upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We be all dead men. Because remember the wrath, God was wrathing upon Egypt. And so they were trying to get Israel out of there. And the people took their dough. The dough is what you make bread. That dough is going to deal with that knowledge. And before it was leavened. So they took the dough before it was leavened and their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according as the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. Now, let's move down to verse number 39. Now remember when they came out, there's a mixed multitude, but let's go to 39. And they baked unleavened cakes, so the cake is without leaven of the dough which they had brought forth out of Egypt. So when we're coming out of Egypt, you got to come out with unleavened, with no leaven, without sin. We got to begin to purge away the desires of the flesh and the mentality of Egypt, which is sinful bondage. For it was not leaven because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victuals. All right, so the women eat their dough, make their cakes. These cakes are, un, are of unleavened bread. And these cakes were to be to the service of the Lord. The proof of that is found in... Oh, let me, before I get to the women. That's what they should do, make them to the Lord. But here in Jeremiah 7, 18, we have the women doing something different. They're making cakes for another reason. Isaiah 4 1. In that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and making their own cakes, their own doctrine, for our own apparel, our own covering. Only let us be called by thy way, thy name, to take away our reproach. That's what you see happening here 
in Jeremiah 7, 18. And we're going to prove it a little bit later. So they need their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. Now, what are these cakes? Jeremiah 24. Cakes are offerings. We got to offer our body. The everything is in a parabolic form. It has a meaning, has a significance. Jeremiah 24, 5 through 7. Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again into this land. <clears throat> and I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. And I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Spirit of God, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. This is what God purposed to do by allowing us to go into captivity on the Chaldeans to get correction that we may come back after 70 years. Now look at verse 8. It says, And as the evil figs which cannot be eaten, so are, excuse me, as the evil figs which cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Surely thus saith the Lord, I will give Zedekiah the king of Judah and his princes and the rest of Jerusalem that remain in this land and them that dwell in the land of Egypt. And I will deliver them to be removed into all kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt and a curse in all places where I shall drive them. Now, the reason being is this because we want to go, our forefathers wanted to go back into Egypt. And they've, they've learned certain things in Egypt and they're practicing it here in Jeremiah 7, 18, making cakes to the queen of heaven. Now, that's what God wants them to do. Go in, submit. But... Israel is doing something else. Let's go to Jeremiah 44, verse 19. It says, And when we burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, so they're caught, we're, our forefathers were caught up worshiping another spirit, the Queen of Heaven, not the Spirit of Christ. And part I drink offers unto her, part I want to focus on this here. Did we make her cakes to worship her? So the cakes are to for worship and pour drink offerings unto her without our men now what are these cakes let's go to Leviticus 24 take a look Leviticus 24 verse number 5 and thou shalt take fine flour so the spirit of God gave Moses, this commandment to tell Israel what they must do. Aaron and the priests had to do this. We see it here, verse 2. Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil, olive, beaten for a light to cause the lamps to burn continually. And he shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Spirit of God continually. The candlestick has to be pure. The oil has to be pure. Then he has to have this offering. And thou shalt take fine flour, pure, and bake 12 cakes, one for each tribe thereof. Two tenths deal shall be in one cake. And thou shalt set them in two rows, six on a row, upon the pure table. Notice everything is pure in the tabernacle. Before the Spirit of God, every offering that comes before the Spirit of God has to be pure. And thou shalt put pure frankincense upon each row, that it may be on the bread for a memorial even an offering made by fire by the desire unto the Spirit of God. Every Sabbath he shall set it in order before the Spirit of God continually being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. So every Sabbath Aaron and them had to make these cakes and these cakes were to be offered before the Spirit of God pure, fine flour, 
on a pure table, pure knowledge, pure truth, pure wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, pure doctrine. Okay? So now, they have these cakes, but here in, instead of doing it pure unto the Lord, we're caught up in Jeremiah 7, giving God's offering to an imposter, to an idol, to a false spirit. So the children, the disciples, organ in the flesh, the fathers have a desire to serve this false spirit. They're making their worship, their offerings to the queen of heaven, and they pour out drink offerings unto other gods. So it leads to idolatry. And then this provokes the spirit of God to anger. Because remember, we read earlier in Isaiah 4.